Yes. With uh, with that being said, uh, Frank Crow and Patrick Arnold got the start. Uh, what did you see on the film from them? Look like they had a pretty good outing. Well, they did for uh, for their time. We appreciate their their efforts, and they went in and really um, competed. Uh, there's things that they certainly can do better, but for their first opportunity, we're well pleased with what they did. Uh, we're in hopes that uh, you know we'll have uh, Logan and Alonzo back uh, before this next week, but we'll find out uh, a little bit more. But we're really pleased they got some meaningful game experience. Patrick had been playing. Uh, sprinkled in, but Frank had not been playing, and so to play a game like that against a good opponent, I think, is going to prove well for us in the future. Landon, Jordan Murray kind of in the same boat. He stepped in for Tyler Hall, and mm -hmm. he did a fantastic job. Well, your observation is pretty accurate. Uh, you know, we were Jordan had played a little bit in the previous game, just a little bit, and we had seen some good signs. You see some things that are encouraging during practice, but. He really came out to compete. I mean, there were times that, I mean, if he stands sideways, you can hardly see him. I mean, I think he's 155 pounds, but he th threw whatever he had out there, and he competed and made some uh, big-time plays. And more than anything else, we saw a competitive nature uh, of him to be able to go out and, and compete the way he did. And so we were well pleased with him. Last week you mentioned turnovers, and this week you guys go out and get three picks. And you know, when it comes to to creating turnovers, I mean, is there something you guys can do mm -hmm. to create turnovers, or is it just you know being in the right place at the right time and making the play? A little bit of both. Um, you know, certainly putting pressure on an offense uh, poses a, a challenge. How an offense is going to handle a football, and when you do pressure them, not only pressure them, I'm just not, right away you think of maybe blitzes, but that's not necessarily the case. If the quarterback is under duress or a running back is running and guys are putting their hats on the football and they're stripping the ball and there's a lot of people around and guys are being really explosive. And then guys executing Logan's Wilson's uh, interception was part of executing a defense. And um, so there's, there's a combination of both. Um, there's no question. I think we're seventh in the country or fifth in the country in turnover margin, something like that. And as you know, the years we've had good years, that margin has always been up. We're taking care of the football and taking it away. And there's, uh, without question, those uh, takeaways had a profound effect in the ball game. I thought it flipped things around. Yes, Davis. You, you mentioned you thought you had Tyler Hall. Copy you have him back this week. Will he practice this week? Will you mm -hmm. hold him out? Or? That's yet to be determined. Uh, I think he's still in protocol, but you know some of the signs that we're getting are encouraging. I know he was on the sidelines jumping up and down. and. Wanting to be out there on the field, and um, those things, from my perspective, are good. But that's I still got to go through the protocol. Has, has Logan started in protocol? Mm, uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did Titus Swoon remind you at all of a guy who used to run here named Brian Hill? <laughs> well, they have different styles, but I think Titus runs with a uh, um, an angry demeanor, is what I would say. I mean, he he, he runs relentlessly. And uh, um, he's always, his legs are churning. And sometimes you get a little bit concerned about uh, with that churning that, you know, that ball is going to get exposed. And he did get the ball stripped from him. So that's going to be a learning lesson from him. But, you know, he's come on. He's taken coaching more. It's all new to him as far as his reads. You know, I thought Gordy Haug had done a great job with him during the course of the game on some of his reads. One of his long runs was, you know, a great cut that he made with the with the instruction that Gordy had given him, but certainly the number of tackles that uh, his yak is is really pretty quite special, and uh, you know we're glad to have him, and um, you know he's just another u arsenal that we have. I don't know. I think he went over 100 yards, and and that's really encouraging. Coach, you talk about competition a lot, and so mm -hmm. the coaches, and your assistants, and, and the players. Given the fact that you saw Frank and Patrick play a lot, Jordan Murray play a lot, how much can that just continue to help your squad develop? Well, depth is always important. You know, uh, I always tell our guys, you know, Proverbs just says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And every day you go out to practice, uh, when you have more competitive guys out there with a team attitude, uh, guys know that they need to be prepared when they go out to practice, that uh, that internal competition is really healthy, and then along with that, just the depth that you have, and that so the the depth uh, providing competition uh, certainly is is encouraging. However, I will say that we're some of those spots that we would like more depth we don't have right now, but 
to see Frank and Jordan Murray uh, and Patrick uh, come in and do the way we did in the game is really, really a, a bright spot. Yes, Davis. You mentioned uh, Jordan's competitiveness. Um, what is it specifically about his skill set that you guys are confident to run him out there as a true freshman? Um, well, some of it uh, was kind of like we didn't have a lot of other options, yeah. but he had practiced well. But quite frankly, I mean, if you look at the number of corners that we've got right now compared to where we're at, uh, during fall camp is significantly different. And so one of the reasons why we double rep and spend a lot of time coaching everybody during fall camp, unlike some other squads, is because injuries are going to happen. And so he showed some good things uh, during practice. He had shown some good things, Davis. But until the bright lights are on, you you really don't know how a guy's going to respond. And he has responded very well. You know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about Braden Smith and, and, and the play mm -hmm. he made. Uh, you know, Texas State getting a pick where he right. came in and, and filled in. Uh, you know, I know he was playing some, some corner on Saturday. You know, was that something that you guys just kind of always had that in your back pocket, knowing that he was that versatile and could, could fill in there? And, and what did you think of the job he did? Well, I thought he did well. Um, and we thought he did well at corner. But, however, that was not planned at the beginning of the year. You know, we thought we had quite a bit of depth at corner. And so when we started looking at the depth chart and who's out there and who can play, uh, we made a determination during the course of the week that he needed to get some meaningful reps in practice at corner. As we move forward, we'll make a, a, a decision whether to try to rep him at both places, at safety and corner, and just solidify him at one spot. I would say right now during the course of this week, he'll probably take some reps at both spots. Yes? First bye week, do you like, Coach, how the schedule kind of broke up with where the buys are kind of placed, so it's, it's well. Kind of I, I tell you season. what, I would have given a month's salary to move that bye week up going into this last week. Uh, now I'm loving it where it's at. Um, yeah, you know, you, it, coaches are pretty much and not not only myself but all my colleagues. You kind of have what you have, and you know the challenges. You know some of the things that you think are somewhat advantageous. I think to have a bye week right now certainly is very timely. And uh, we're going to utilize that wisely. You, you want to make sure we turn that as a bye week, not an off week, uh, that you're getting things done, you're getting active rest, you're staying strong in the weight room, you're getting healed up, you're working on some fundamentals, you're developing some depth. We've taken a book of what we need to improve on offensively, defensively, and in the kicking game. We're going to work on some of those things as we get ourselves deep into conference play now. Um, we play in a really competitive conference, and so it's great to have a bye week now, especially when we're going to go out and play, a, I think, an excellent San Diego State football team. Is it nice that it's kind of broken the schedule up into mm -hmm. different chunks? Because you'll play three straight and then get a right. bye and then finish. Well, yeah, I, I like it. Um, and we've kind of, we'll do some recruiting. Certainly some coaches will be out recruiting. I'm going to be departing, doing some recruiting as well, in-season recruiting. Um, you know, it's certainly better. I think one year we had a bye week at the very, very – about the very last week, which seemed odd. Um, so, um, you know, I think the fact that we have two this year is, I think that's good for college football. You know, when you have young men that, as coaches, you're grinding away, uh, but, you, you know, you fail to realize these guys are 18, 19, 20 years old. And so for them to maybe have a chance to get caught up academically a little bit more, uh, it's going to be important as well. Yes? Are you concerned at all about Cooper, uh, you know, pulling – I think every kick he misses here is pulled to the left. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about that really? Um, no. And I, I want to be real clear that within the operation of uh, – and, and I, I'm going to be I'm going to be pointed about what I say, and I'm going to hope that you kind of read between the lines. I think Cooper is kicking the ball well, but there's three facets in that. There's the kicker, there's a holder, and there's the snapper. And so um, we've got some work to do with those three elements. Well said. You got it. Okay. Yes, Davis. Uh, Trey Smith, he's played four games. Mm -hmm. If he were to miss the rest of the season, do you know if there's any possibility of a medical hardship, 60 year? Have you guys talked about any of that? No, we really haven't. Um, you know, I, I think we're in the midst of just trying to do what we can. We'll see when, but I do know it's going to be quite a way for him to get back and you know the NCAA right now has got you know there's different guidelines in the waiver process I think if anybody can figure that one out they can solve the problems we got in Washington DC right now um, so uh, we'll move forward um, Trey's you know he's in a boot it's just going to take some time
But, you know, I, I can tell you Trey has been a great addition to our football team. Many times when you have a guy that transfers in, uh, you don't know how they're going to assimilate in your locker room, and that word of culture is sometimes overused, but that's really important to us, and Trey's been an ultimate team player. Anything else on a bye week? Okay, uh, Keith, you're on the line. Do you have a question? I do. Um, I, I'm curious, the, the governor of California signed into law that Fair Pay to Play Act. Mm -hmm. How do you think that that will begin in 2023? How do you think that will affect college football? Do you have an opinion either way on that? Well, I certainly do. I serve on their NCAA competition committee, and we had an extended conversation within the Mountain West because many of our uh, schools uh, are from uh, the Mountain West. And so um, I would be surprised if this whole, um, I guess, initiative does not end up in the Supreme Court, um, uh, settled by people that are far above my pay grade. Um, you know, I think it's a, I don't even think it's a complex issue. I think that there's, there's some things, I think NCAA football, there's some great things that we have going on right now. College football's in a good place, and uh, so I, I do think uh, we want to be sensitive to the student athletes and their needs, but they're here to get an education, and uh, I think sometimes some people on the outside who think they really understand uh, the dynamics of NCAA football are just people on the outside that don't live the life of the student athlete. That's going to probably make some national headlines. Any, yes, Davis. Craig, on that same line, if this thing does stick, and obviously California is a huge recruiting mm -hmm. territory for you guys. Would you think Wyoming would have to come up with some, some sort of legislation? I, I, I think you're, you're looking at a whole huge dynamic change. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where I think it's one of these things whenever somebody has a, a, an initiative that they think is a really good idea, they, they don't see the full complexity. Design. While I'm personally not completely happy with everything the NCAA does, there's a reason why we're part of this organization. It's a voluntary organization. Schools can either choose to be part of the NCAA or not. And the NCAA has some guidelines, and one of them is amateurism and how they view that. And so um, I, I just think that there's not going to be a quick fix on this. I think it's going to go out quite a while. Um, I do know this is that uh, – What's going on with the student athlete right now? I think each year uh, their um, their benefits that they're getting are significantly being improved. Uh, the academic uh, support, uh, the cost of attendance, the student welfare uh, assistance funds, all these things. And sometimes what people see too, they I get that they're looking at uh, a college football player or. A, men's basketball player, what people may not realize is we have 400 and some student athletes and how you grapple with all that. It's a complex issue. And so uh, I think we're in a, in a good place. And, uh, um, and so um, I, while I, why I may um, not disagree with some of the, uh, uh, maybe the initial thoughts on some people on the outside looking in, but it'd be interesting to how many people that are passing these uh, proposals in a state legislative body have ever even dealt with college athletics, even understand college athletics. And so um, we're striving to do more. I know that there's more funds than there ever has been. And I also know college football is more popular than there ever has been. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks,